Hello everyone, I am Dr. A. Sai Padma, Assistant Professor, Department of Biochemistry, Bhavan Swekananda College, Sainikpuri, Secondabad. In this video, we will be looking at phase variation in Salmonella. The contents covered in this video are understanding the term phase variation, structural features of Salmonella flagellum proteins, mechanism of phase variation, and importance of phase variation. Coming to the term phase variation, as we all know that bacteria have thousands of proteins encoded in their genes and these genes they code for variety of proteins which includes the enzymes needed for metabolism and the proteins which are involved in sticking to their host and also the proteins to make up the flagella for their motility and many more proteins which are essential for their survival in the host. And expression of some of these proteins can be interchangeably switched on and off. This process is known as phase variation. And phase variation is a reversible process which helps the bacteria to quickly generate the diversity among the population and to adapt to rapidly changing environments and to evade immune response of the host. As like many other bacteria, even the Salmonella enterica also use this technique to switch between different types of the flagellin protein and as a result, flagella with different structures are assembled. And coming to the structural features of the Salmonella flagella, and all these Salmonella species are non-spore forming, predominantly Motile enterobacteria with cell diameters ranging from 0 0.7 to 1.5 micrometers and lengths from 2 to 5 micrometers. And they all have the peritrichus flagella. That means all the body will be surrounded by the flagella. And uh, amongst all the Salmonella species, and a specific example that is Salmonella entericum, Cirova typhimurium, which has approximately 6 to 10 flagella that are arranged around the cell peritrichusly. And coming to the structure of the individual flagella, each individual flagella is composed of three distinct substructures. And if you observe this diagram, this consists of three different substructures. The first one is called as a basal body and a transmembrane motor, a hook that links the motor and the filament and the last one is the filament. So this is the basal body and this is the transmembrane motor and this is the hook and this is the filament. And this diagram is the electron microscope diagram of the Salmonella typhimurium where it is harboring the human cells where we can see the flagella around the rod shaped bacterium and all the bacteria they are uh, harboring the human cells and each filament is approximately 10 micrometers in length and composed of so many subunits of the flagellin protein nearly 20,000 subunits of the flagellin protein either of the type flagellin C or of the type flagellin B any one of the flagellin protein only will make up the flagella either C or the B in a particular bacterium. The flagellin C and the flagellin B proteins are identical in their first 71 amino acids and also in the last 46 amino acids. So where the difference is coming is in the middle of the amino acid sequence of the total protein of either flagellin C or the flagellin B where the divergence is present and uh, which results in the distinct antigen cities and most of the salmonella species they alternate between the expression of these two different flagellin genes they are either flagellin c or the flagellin b at a rate of 10 to the power of minus 3 to 10 to the power of minus 5 per cell generation so it is not so frequently happening only at the rate of 10 to the power of minus 3 to 10 to the power of minus 5 per cell generation and coming to the mechanism of the phase variation this happens by a specific phenomenon called as site specific DNA inversion and if we look at this diagram 
Here we can see the genes which codes for the flagellin B along with another gene which is called as the flagellin A. These two genes are controlled by the single promoter. So this is like an operon regulated by the promoter with the sequence which is oriented in this way and this promoter is being flanked by two recombination sites called as the Hix L. This is the Hix L on the left side and Hix R on the right side. When the promoter is in this particular orientation, it is able to transcribe the genes of the flagellin B and A and the respective proteins, flagellin B protein and the flagellin A proteins will be synthesized from the respective mRNA. And this flagellin A is not in a flagellar protein, but it is in a repressor for another flagellar protein gene. That is the flagellar flagellin C gene. So, if we observe here, this flagellin A protein goes and binds to the promoter operator region of the flagellin C gene and putting this gene to off. So, at a particular point of uh, time, we can see only flagellin B is expressed, not the flagellin C is expressed. And coming to the phase variation by a process of the DNA inversion at the site specific of these two recombination sites with the help of a specific enzyme called as the HIN recombinase, which helps in the inversion of this particular DNA segment that is a promoter region. In this orientation, this promoter is no more able to transcribe the operon which consists of the flagellin B and flagellin A genes. So, neither flagellin B protein will be synthesized, neither flagellin A. So, once there is no presence of the flagellin A to repress the flagellin C gene, this flagellin C gene will be expressed and ultimately flagellin C protein will be synthesized. So, if we observe here again, flagellin B protein is not synthesized, but at the same time, from the other segment of the DNA, we can see the flagellin C is been expressed. So, that is the uh, mechanism by site-specific DNA inversion. And what is the use of this kind of the phase variation in the bacteria is basically to evade the immune response from the host. This is called as the immune evasion. There are many studies recently also showing that the flagellin proteins either of the B or the C, they elicit the immune response especially by the stimulation of the toll-like receptor and which in, which in turn leads to the mobilization of the nuclear factor NF kappa B and stimulation of the tumor necrosis factor alpha. And this tumor necrosis factor alpha is involved in the regulation of immune cells. So, what we are understanding from this is the flagellin proteins are able to stimulate the immune response in the host system. And most T lymphocytes, especially of the CD4 uh, plus T lymphocytes, which are generated against the, uh, against the infection by the salmonella, they are directed towards the salmonella flagellin epitopes. So, flagellin epitopes are capable of eliciting the immune response even with respect of the T lymphocytes. So, if the host is able to uh, generate the immune response, the bacteria looks to evade by changing the um, flagellin proteins from one type of the flagellin proteins to the other type of the flagellin proteins. So, the host takes time to again elicit the immune response by that time the bacteria will be able to multiply and survive in the host system. That is the advantage for the bacteria by having this phase variation by evolution of the immune response from the host. Though there are uh, evidences that the immune evasion by the phase variation is being operated by the flagellin proteins, its role in the pathogenesis is need to be well understood further because there is there are no studies where this flagellin proteins themselves are the causative factors for the 
pathogenesis of the salmonella there are other antigens which are more responsible for the pathogenesis and uh, the resources are taken from these uh, mentioned thank you